Did you know that homosexuality is the most dangerous sin ever? Why is there so much confusion and great controversy surrounding this issue more than any other? On this broadcast, we're going to learn about the origins of this sin and the consequences of embracing such a lifestyle. Stay tuned as we hear from God's Holy Word. From our global studios and around the world, this is Jesus Christ Only TV. Broadcasting the message of Jesus Christ as the only Lord and Savior of the world. Warning people that God now commands all men everywhere to repent. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God in the entire world as a witness to all the nations. In reminding all that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Here now is your host, Evangelist Peter G. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Everlasting Gospel Program. Our message today is entitled, The Day America Crossed the Red Line. This message was recorded back in 2015 after the United States Supreme Court legalized gay marriage affecting all 50 states. Stay tuned as we go through this message. And I welcome you to use your Bible so that we may have full understanding about the will of God regarding this very dangerous sin. God bless you as we listen to this message. Our sermon today is entitled, The Day America Crossed the Red Line. Our reading is coming from the book of Romans chapter 1 from verses 18 to 32. But first, here is the latest. Same-sex marriage has become legal in America after the Supreme Court of the United States in a landmark historic decision formally allowed homosexual marriage in all 50 states. The ruling delivered on Friday, June the 26th, 2015, not only made history for a nation that once feared God by becoming the 21st country on earth to legalize gay marriage, but also sent a clear signal to the heavens that the United States of America has officially chosen to become the modern-day Sodom and Gomorrah, meaning, therefore, that it's no longer the superpower it once was. The consequence of such a ruling not only confirms an immense erosion of a core moral fabric of a nation founded on biblical principles and a rapid descent to oblivion, but it also becomes a significant milestone and a turning point of biblical proportions that cements the day America crossed the red line and essentially declared moral bankruptcy, culminating to the sodomization of America. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 reminds us that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. June the 26th, 2015 will go down as the saddest day in American history and the most impactful of any kind when the U.S. condemned and brought judgment on itself from the heavens by taking a rather radical and defiant action against the will of God which will in turn result in unbelievable consequences, threatening the very existence of the United States of America as we know it, just as it happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Legalization of homosexual marriage in America means that the nation has now officially crossed the red line in the eyes of the living God. 
which in itself is a major sign of judgment. And in the book of Romans chapter 1, verses 18, the Apostle Paul said that the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven to those who suppress the truth through their ungodly lifestyle. Meaning, therefore, that God is currently implementing His judgments on those who disobey His will and ignore His warning from the Bible, and the effects of His judgments are manifested clearly for all to see. Paul issued a similar warning in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 6, and also in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3, which says, But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. You may wonder and ask a question, why such a harsh judgment? Paul answers that question in verse 19 to 23 of Romans chapter 1, which says, Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. So in other words, even though the people were given an opportunity to know God by gaining enough knowledge of who He is through the evidence of the physical attributes of His creation, and gaining an understanding about His standard for holiness, they still chose to ignore everything and went the opposite direction. Thus, the heaven's declaration of God's judgment upon them. Dear friends, God will never accuse anyone of any wrongdoing. People will always accuse themselves through their own actions or behavior, if they are evil and contrary to His word. The main focus of our message today rests in verses 24 to 28 of Romans chapter 1. Please pay close attention because it answers the main question about the most misconceived perceptions that people have regarding the origins of perversion, especially the grievous sin of homosexuality. The following are the three major causes of homosexuality. Firstly, uncleanliness. Verse 24 and 25 of Romans chapter 1 says, Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in their lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. In other words, because they had very strong desires for sexual lust within the same gender, God surrendered them to continue craving for more evil and to dishonor their bodies, mainly because they had broken the first commandment, which says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So idolatry, or the worship of the created things, rather than the Creator, God Himself, was the main reason here, and God had to give them up 
or disown them to pursue that which they desired more than him. Therefore, do not desire or idolize another individual more than God, the Creator, because idolatry leads to uncleanliness. Secondly, vile passions. If you look at verse 26 to 27, it says, God gave them up to vile passions. Women became lesbians, men became gays, and both received the penalty of their error, which was due. Mainly because of departing from the natural means of sex between a husband and wife. The following words describe the meaning of the word vile in the dictionary. Vile means nasty, horrible, extremely unpleasant, sickening, offensive, disgusting, abominable, disgraceful, nauseating, despicable, wicked, dishonorable, and many more. So in other words, you may paraphrase it and say that God gave them up to an extremely unpleasant, shameful, and nauseating strong sexual desire for one another within the same gender. Thirdly, verse 28 says, God gave them up to a debased mind, meaning that their minds became corrupted, degraded, lowered below the level of animals, depraved, perverted, and many more. The condition of their minds and their spiritual quality was lowered so low that they engaged in acts of disobedience towards a holy God and his creation, thinking that it was normal for a man to desire another for sexual activity and a woman for another, which as you know is quite impractical, given that women who engage in this sin can only use man-made tools to manipulate their thirst for sexual passions with each other, since it's naturally and physically impossible to find themselves in a place of sexual love. Men too cannot gain orgasm like women do. It's an impossibility since they were not created that way. God created a woman for a man, according to Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 23, which says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made it into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of men. The Apostle Paul reinforces that thought in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 8 and 9, which says, For man is not from woman, but woman from man. Nor was man created for the woman, but woman for the man. Homosexuality is both an abomination and a grievous sin in the eyes of the Lord, as is demonstrated in the following scriptures in the Bible. Genesis chapter 13 verse 13 says, But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Also, the Lord God describes this sin as grievous in the book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 20, which says, And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave. So when God, the Creator, says that something is very grievous, exceedingly wicked and sinful, He means exactly that. And there's nothing that mankind can do to reverse His opinion about this awful sin, because He sees it as very grievous, exceedingly wicked, and sinful that no human being anywhere on earth, be it a politician, scientist, judges, religious leaders who support homosexuality, or any church group for that matter in the entire world, will ever succeed in changing God's position, view, or perspective on this very dangerous sin. Secondly, God declared that sin an abomination 
in the book of Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22, which says, You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. The three dictionary meaning of the word abomination is something greatly disliked or abhorred. Second, intense aversion or loathing, detestation. Third, a vile or shameful action, condition or habit. God has both categorically and officially declared homosexuality an abomination and there is no room for negotiation. His word is final unless one repents. And because of the magnitude of this sin of abomination, those who committed this offensive sin in the days of Moses in the Old Testament suffered instant death by stoning and also God destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone, which further demonstrates the severity, gravity, and seriousness in which he views this sin from the heaven, as we see in the book of Genesis chapter 19, verse 24 to 25, which says, Therefore, then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens, so he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. Those two cities of Sodom and Gomorrah had defiled the land, the people, and had contaminated the entire environment. So God had to act then to end that demonic madness by raining fire from heaven. And there is biblical evidence which supports his promise to repeat the same judgment like he carried out in Sodom and Gomorrah to future cities, states, and nations that allow, accept, and approve or legalize homosexuality. So God issued a stern warning to future generations of which we are a part of concerning the homosexual sin. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 24 to 30, it says, Do not defile yourselves with any of these things, for by all these the nations are defiled, which I am casting out before you. For the land is defiled, therefore I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it, and the land vomits out its inhabitants. You shall therefore keep my statutes, and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, either any of your own nation, or any stranger who dwells among you. For all these abominations the men of the land have done, who are before you, and thus the land is defiled, lest the land vomit you out also when you defile it, as it vomited out the nations that were before you. For whoever commits any of these abominations, the persons who commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore you shall keep my ordinance, so that you do not commit any of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that you do not defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13 also says, If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. In the New Testament, the Bible promises that those who practice that sin will end up in hell. The book of Jude, for example, from verse 5 to 8 says, but I want to remind you, though you, you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels, who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them in a similar manner to this, having given themselves over to sexual immorality 
and gone after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile their flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. The sin of homosexuality and its acceptance, especially here in the West, meaning Europe and America, is a major sign of the end times, and the embrace of such a lifestyle has now become part of the American way by systematically interweaving it within the social fabric of its society, which further magnifies the degree of judgment that will befall America due to its quest to become the modern-day Sodom and Gomorrah, and as a consequence has misled other nations of the earth who look up to it for global leadership in both geopolitical and social realms. The cup of iniquity is full and overflowing, and God is definitely going to respond. There is no question about it. Here is how God is going to respond. God might choose either one of the following ways as a punishment for America's homosexual sin in keeping up with a past biblical pattern. Option number one, God could destroy America by fire from heaven or allow it to be attacked by a foreign nation with nuclear bombs. The key point being destruction by fire. Option number two, God could cause major flooding in prominent parts of America or cause a mega earthquake to occur which would have catastrophic consequences and make the entire country inhabitable because the land is defiled. Either way, America's destruction by God is inevitable and a foregone conclusion. God has finally withdrawn his hand of protection on America and in case of any military confrontation with any country, the United States of America would lose badly. Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 26 to 30, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the day of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Notice the destruction of human life in both occasions was necessitated because of the sin of immorality. In the days of Noah, it was due to the fallen angels coming into the daughters of men and producing giants and were destroyed with floods. And in Sodom and Gomorrah, it was due to homosexuality and were destroyed with fire and brimstone. The Apostle Peter in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 6 says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. This is a serious warning that the backslidden church is refusing to heed. Instead, they have chosen to preach heresies mixed with a false gospel for fear of men, so that they may maintain, retain, and remain religiously relevant and politically correct at the expense of the word of God and the true gospel of Jesus Christ. That's a sign of unbelief. The modern-day Laodicean church has committed the sin of cowardice and treason against the word of God and Christ himself, and have become sellouts in the religious market of the day. They have not only thrown the gospel of Jesus Christ under the bus, 
but have also traded the truth for a lie. They have also declined to stand firm for the truth and refuse to demand repentance from sinners in their preaching. The backslidden church has greatly injured the image of Christ in wholesale and denied him publicly by going against his own word. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8 says, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Cowardice is fear, fear of standing up for the truth that you knew to be true. So the fallen church shall be judged for knowing the truth, for being fearful of revealing the same truth, and for pretending to love Jesus Christ by misusing his name every Sunday and whenever they gained an opportunity. But indeed, they were never in true love with Jesus Christ. It was fake love because perfect love casts out fear. According to 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, which says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. The fallen church and their preachers who support homosexuality shall be grouped together with sinners on judgment day, and shall be indicted for abdicating both their moral and spiritual responsibility of revealing the truth as is found in the Holy Bible. Their misdeeds brought much shame to the living God before men and turned away so many souls that otherwise would have believed the gospel and be saved. It's indeed both a detestable and an unacceptable error before the Lord, something that was happening also in the days of Jeremiah the prophet. There were preacher traders also in those days who refused to preach the true word of God, just like we are witnessing today. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 14, he says, Also, I have seen a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They also strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns back from his wickedness. All of them are like Sodom to me, and her inhabitants like Gomorrah. Now you can see the pattern both in modern times as well as in ancient times. The so-called preacher traders are not only guilty of strengthening the hand of the evildoers by supporting homosexuality, but are also always ashamed of the truth so that no one turns back from his wickedness. Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 26, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Just like it was in the days of prophet Jeremiah, we have today in our generation a number of large traditional Christian denominations who deceive a lot of people out there with lies, forged claims, and pathetic misrepresentation of the truth. For instance, they claim that homosexuality is a genetic malfunction or a form of disability that those who commit that sin were born or created that way. And not only do they make such claims, but they also accept, approve, and officiate or perform same-sex marriage. Gay wedding ceremonies have now become prevalent and a normal thing in their churches, which is in itself a terrible disgrace and a detestable thing even to imagine that it actually takes place. How can you as a church claim that these people were born that way or were created that way. While the Bible, on the other hand, says that God himself gave them up 
to become abominable homosexuals. Who are we going to believe? Were they born that way? Or did God give them up? Which side are you on? Are you with God and his word? Or do you want to believe your own thing? We as preachers and any true believer in Jesus Christ out there are supposed to be on God's side and his word at all times, in season and out of season, when people like it or when they don't like it, if indeed God has called us to handle his word. I have never come across a preacher in any church group which supports gay marriage, provide any single concrete scriptural evidence or a simple reference story from the Bible as an example, where homosexual couples got married with God's blessings or any single indication in the Bible for that matter, where God explicitly said that male and male could get married and vice versa, and where he sanctioned such an arrangement. Instead, all we hear about from all these fallen churches is only their idol theories, demonically inspired illusions, deformed debates, and endless opinions that are mostly shaped and pushed by scientists and bought by fallen Christian denominations who suggest and promote that God may have made a mistake of creating some men to function as women trapped in men's bodies yet they are women on the inside and vice versa. That's making a mockery of God and shaming him who is holy and perfect in all things of his creation, which is not only an, an atrocious spiritual crime, but also a serious contravention of his word in the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 6 to 9, which says, But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Obviously, throughout the history of mankind, the large majority of the people, especially in the civilized world, will always choose to reject God and His Word, and only a very tiny fraction of people stick with God to the very end. People like Noah, Daniel the prophet, Joseph in Egypt, Joshua, Caleb, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The rest of the modern-day lukewarm church that doesn't necessarily support this issue of homosexuality has adamantly remained awful and stagnantly silent in their little sleepy cocoons while God's word is being trampled down and under, attacked severely by the heathens left and right, who shamelessly mock our Lord's name and degrade it when they use it as a curse word. The lukewarm church has completely failed the Lord Jesus Christ. They have sold out and turned its back on him by refusing to preach the truth as is found in the Holy Bible, which says very clearly that it is impossible for any homosexual person to enter heaven. And this is supported by 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, which says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. Also, the Bible is clear about how to cure sexual temptations. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2 says, Nevertheless, because of sexual immolarity, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. You see, the church is trying very hard to be friends with the world and doesn't want to be seen as rocking the boat, if you will. But the day of judgment is soon approaching, and their days are numbered. God's swift judgment will fall on them like rain, and they shall surely not escape. 
because they have violated the Lord's holy word and changed its meaning entirely from its original intent. It's not only a treasonable act in the eyes of a holy God to act in that manner, but it's also an act known as preaching another gospel, which the Apostle Paul said was an unforgivable sin in the book of Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6 to 10, which says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a born servant of Christ. These fallen preachers, churches, and denominations have disqualified themselves completely from the moral and the noble duty of serving the Lord and have trespassed, betrayed, and ceased from being true born servants of Jesus Christ by going against his command, just like Judas the Iscariot when he betrayed Jesus Christ and became disgraced for selling Christ out to be crucified. Likewise, these abominable denominations of false Christian churches shall also be judged worse than the heathens and shall be cast into the lake of fire because of preaching falsehoods misleading the lost and practicing an error which led multitudes of congregations to hell. So if you are a preacher or a pastor out there and support gay marriage, you are at risk of going to hell because of preaching another gospel. You must repent. In conclusion, the Apostle Paul says, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. In other words, those who approve and support the grievous and wicked sin of homosexuality shall suffer the same level of punishment on judgment day as those who actually practiced and lived as homosexuals, even though they themselves may not have been physically involved as homosexuals, they participated in the act of this sin emotionally as spectators, cheerleaders, and in their hearts, they secretly and privately admired, condoned, and accepted this sin as a normal pleasurable thing to do, which is against the will of the living God. Therefore, these two groups are categorized together both the homosexuals and their admirers and shall face the full wrath of God and the same fate of punishment, which is eternal fire in hell, unless they repent. Repentance is the only way out. Jesus Christ can forgive any homosexual person who repents before him today and is more than willing to do so through his blood. Even to those who support that evil lifestyle, which God has declared an abomination, so if you find yourself in a church that affirms, approves, condones, and supports gay marriage, just know that you have been warned of the danger of damnation in hell and the lake of fire. And the best thing that you can do right now is to repent and get right with God and out of that false church that you associate yourself with because renouncing that sin by action is the only way out that will practically demonstrate before God that you have truly repented and have totally surrendered before Him. Light and darkness cannot and will never mix. You are either in the light or in darkness. You can have it both ways, not in the kingdom of God.
Brethren, the time has come to declare the righteous gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ without fear or favor at this very last hour before his soon return. Keep your house in order. There isn't much time left. His return is imminent. Repent and come back to Christ. Make sure you are living a clean and a holy life, separated from this world and its desires to compromise with sin. The time for repentance is now. No matter your station in life or current location around the world, this is the time for you to repent. And I'm here to help lead you in a prayer of repentance and salvation right now. So please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I believe in the gospel that you are the Son of God who came to die on the cross and shed your precious blood for me. I confess and repent all my sins and transgressions that I have committed before you in my life. Please forgive me and cleanse me with your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. Fill me with your spirit and clothe me with your righteousness. I believe now I'm born again. Help me to walk in holiness as your disciple. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have just said that prayer, please send us an email to preacher at jesuschristonly.tv so that we may stay in prayer with you as you journey towards heaven and as you become a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Please also tell others about this program, the Everlasting Gospel Program. Till next time, may the Lord be with you and bless you. Amen. Thank you for watching the Everlasting Gospel Program. We hope that you are blessed and encouraged through this anointed preaching of the true Word of God. We would love to hear from you. Please write to us with your testimonies, prayers, and support at Jesus Christ Only TV, P.O. Box 33547, Seattle, Washington, 98133. Or visit us at www.jesuschristonly.tv. You can also visit us by clicking the Facebook or Twitter buttons located on the top right side of our homepage and join in the conversation or contact us electronically through our Contact Us page on our website. Thank you. God bless you all. And remember, the time is now. Jesus Christ Only TV, preaching Christ to the world.